Well, today we're talking about a change, and every change is typically the end of something, but also the beginning of something new. We've done videos on change before, and I think that's one thing about homesteading is you're always going to go through different kinds of change throughout your homesteading career. But today we're talking about a change in the kind of chickens we grow. And this is probably going to come to a big shock to some. We've grown Partridge on Eclairs, which are a Canadian heritage breed of chicken, since 2009. So I think that works out in the math to be 14 years. So we've had the same kind of chicken and only that kind of chicken for a very long time. So over that time, we've been big advocates of the breed and all their production qualities and what they can do for a homestead or somebody who wants to grow their own food as well as breeding to the standard because form and function typically do go hand in hand. All that being said, after all this time, we've decided to get out of breeding and keeping Partridge on Eclairs. And we're gonna discuss with you why that is. So what was the big motivator for this decision, which probably at face value seems like a rash decision, but hopefully by the end of this video, you'll understand it was extremely well thought out and calculated, or at least that's what we hope. But what was the reason why we did this? It really came down to space. And at face value, that's going to sound rather odd because we have 38 acres, we have tons of space, but it's the interaction of space and future concerns, which really have to do with disease, in particular, avian influenza. So we have a lot of infrastructure here. We have 38 acres, we have several small little outbuildings, and at face value, it's like, what are they talking about about space? They have tons of space to put things in. For anybody who's just found us, and for a reminder for anybody who's been with us for a while, we do things a little differently where we try to maintain populations. And we're going to get into some discussions on that in the future. But for the purpose of this video, we go by the rule of four. So with our partridge chanticleers, we had basically four lines with four roosters and four groups of hens. That meant we needed space. When they have young, which part of the thing is to produce young, to produce chicken, to produce replacements, to keep the whole population going, you have even more chickens. And the buildings we have that are available for the chickens or the poultry in general basically aren't big enough or numerous enough to house the population at the size that we need to or want. That is, of course, in relation to having to lock the flock up. And this was one of the downsides that we really were finding with the Partridge Chanticleers is if we had to lock them up, they weren't happy. And if they weren't happy, they weren't productive, whether that's eggs or meat, they just didn't grow well, etc. And again, at face value, that's going to all sound very weird. But anybody who lives in Canada, unfortunately, because of the uh, rearing of its ugly head, avian influenza has some policies that are attached to it. And one of those policies across the country is that birds should be kept locked up at all times. During the last two springs, there's basically been that threat, for lack of a better way to put it, of avian influenza and having to keep the birds locked up because if they do contract that, that is the end. So when you're talking about a rare breed or any breed that you're using to depend on to produce the food that your family needs, that's a pretty scary prospect. And frankly, we couldn't meet that goal with the Partridge Chanticleers. I'm going to go one step further and say we don't think we could meet that goal with any large fowl chicken, but I'll get more into that in a minute. So of course we have a huge barn and you could make the argument that that barn could be converted into space that we could easily have a huge flock of partridge chanticleers but it brings us to the other point of competition in any natural environment you have competition on any homestead you have competition for resources and buildings and infrastructure are one of those pieces of competition. Basically, we were just finding it too difficult when we have other things like the sheep and the rabbits that are equally as big, if not potentially higher priorities for us at this point in time in our life. It just didn't make sense slash wasn't feasible for us to uh, upscale our infrastructure, let alone without permits and all of that sort of thing, which is a whole nother topic. Now, as a added little tidbit here, for the same reasons we've of competition, essentially, we've also decided to stop raising geese. 
and waterfowl basically in general for the foreseeable future. And the reasons are very similar. It's space and disease issues. We found with the geese, they really couldn't be done in confinement well, for lack of a better way to put it. And unfortunately, again, we were finding that they were competing at least at certain times of the year, primarily the height of summer or what would be kind of our driest, hottest time, which is June and July, when there's baby animals of all sorts everywhere and the gardens are in full swing, they were competing for space with the sheep, both in terms of food resources and physical places to put them. So while at other times of the year, very economical, very efficient, very useful, and we don't, in both the cases of the chickens, the Chanticleers and the geese, the American buff geese, we, this has nothing to do with the breeds not doing what they're supposed to do, doing it well, etc. This has to do with the dynamics of our farm ecosystem. So we've essentially stopped raising two of the biggest poultry components of our farm. Standard sized partridge chanticleer chickens and geese. So really at this point in the video, everything's sounding pretty negative. It's sounding kind of doomy and gloomy, like it's the end. But as I said at the beginning, every end has a new beginning. That's kind of actually funny that I said it that way. And the new beginning here is we're not getting out of raising poultry. Uh, poultry in general, in a very high level sense, are, in my opinion, still invaluable in a homesteading setting. In particular, and what I'm going to talk about next, is the production of eggs. Eggs are a valuable, valuable commodity on a homestead scale or just in general. That's a really high value food item. And you only get eggs from one source, birds. So because eggs are valuable, because we want to have eggs as part of our diet, because we do eat animal products, which is a whole nother discussion, we wanted to keep birds. And we, in the last two years, really, we've kind of gone around in circles on a discussion, very similar to what we've done in the past with our rabbit herd, which I think we may even have some videos on that. If we do, I'll link that above always toyed with the idea of switching to a bantam breed of chicken because sometimes big things can come in small packages and for anybody who has been following along with us they've probably already noticed what i'm about to say we made that switch and basically transitioned through downsizing and rehoming the partridge chanticleer flock to switching breeds and upsizing a new flock kind of at the same time so there was overlap and our choice was to go to silky bantams which is not at face value something any any logical homesteader would jump to first so the purpose of this video is not to discuss the merits and the choices of why we went with bantam uh, silkies we're going to save that for another video for those who are interested but right now i want to talk about sort of three gen general topics <clears throat> two positives and a negative that kind of have become apparent with this switch and some of the background thought process on making a switch to bantams. So I'm going to start with the negative and follow up with the two positives. So the negative is, and the elephant in the room that I'm sure everybody's going to comment on on this video is, but they're smaller. Bantams of any kind are smaller. So that means smaller eggs and less meat. And while that is sort of fundamentally true, the two positives, I think, offset it, which we'll get to those in a second. But the smaller, really, and the whole bantam discussion, whether it's silkies or another breed, is that space and disease issue, which kind of work in tandem with one another, are basically solved because they're small enough that the square footage of the infrastructure we have is sufficient to lock them up when and if we have to so that we can keep them indoors. And a smaller animal is typically happier in a smaller space, for lack of a better way to put it. So while we always had the issue with the Chanticleers and the geese of they really did not like being confined. And while it was nice to have something that could be very extensive, extensive poultry comes with a lot of other issues. Smaller is a negative in one sense and a huge positive in another. But smaller also, and we've definitely been finding this, results in a smaller feed bill per animal. And I think that's huge, and that's actually a historical uh, 
metric, for lack of a better way to put it, where there are cultures, and even in present day, that those smaller animals are actually beneficial because when you're trying to go into a system where you're less dependent on outside inputs, something that you can actually feed yourself, which there's more to that topic and we will definitely come back to this, but something that you can feed yourself or have the better likelihood of being able to substantially subsidize yourself with things that are from your farm or your homestead, that's huge from a uh, resilience perspective. So the last positive for us personally is also a kind of a bit of a negative, and this is, I think, the bittersweet one of everything, because we raised the partridge on eclairs for a very long time. Obviously, for those who have followed along, I've raised other poultry that are rarer as well over time, and it's always kind of sad to make a decision that you're no longer going to keep doing something. One of the real big appeals to switching to the silky bantams and I will say this, the silkies over any of the other bantams, at least where we live, is availability. They are basically not a rare breed. They are still a heritage breed because they're very old, but they're not rare. And rarity is kind of bittersweet. Animals that have unique qualities are worth preserving, are worth, are worth keeping, but you can't do everything by yourself and you still do need a community. Now, while we were raising partridge chana clairs, we've obviously met some amazing people and been involved in that partridge chana clair community for a very long time. Unfortunately, and I will say it this way, for us, we are very far physically from where most people who have the breed live. We're not very close to each other, and that was a huge hurdle. I think with that, it's it's sad to leave that community. It's sad to stop raising the breed. When we still like the production qualities and just the bird in general, but it's a logical, given some outside pressures and given just changes in the human environment, it makes sense for us to do this right now, at least to us. And so we have. So in typical hickory craft fashion, we're also in the process of doing a bit of an experiment with our rabbits. Now, not going to get into details, but slight spoiler alert, the trajectory of this one is very different. So stay tuned because there will be some rabbit content and discussion on a very similar theme or thread of looking at a smaller breed of rabbit and sort of looking at the metrics of it. So there we go. Basically, Another big change, we've had a series of these and we actually were talking in a discussion that we're actually going to share as a podcast here coming up soon of some of the thought process. This is going to be a little different format from our videos where we're, it's just kind of thoughts. It's just going to be audio. So stay tuned for that. But we put a lot of thought into these decisions we make and it's all in how you look at the metrics. I think that's a, that's a huge take home message here is what metrics are you going for? What are your important values? And then you make decisions based on those. That's kind of making an evidence-based decision. So on that note, stay tuned. Maybe within the next couple of weeks, we are going to have a deeper dive into why we chose silky bantams over any of the other bantam breeds. And I mean, one of the metrics was they're a little more common than some of the other breeds. But really, I'm going to say that was a very superficial one that just made access to them easier, but didn't really necessarily completely sway us in the decision. There's a few other reasons. So stay tuned for that. For those of you who followed us for goose content, uh, everything we've sort of documented up to this point is 100% accurate. The only reason we've got rid of the geese was really we had to simplify a little bit because we just, the way our property is positioned and shaped and the barnyard area etc though we have 38 acres space is kind of at a premium here and spoiler alert there will be some more videos on sheep and some plans on sheep as well so you're kind of getting the rundown that we're going to be coming along with some videos about rabbits sheep and chickens in the near future but uh that kind of support why we've made some decisions there too so although this is a little bit of bad news for those of you who've been following along with us specifically for Parkery Chanticleer content and content on raising geese. Hopefully you still follow along because we're still going to use the same principles, i.e. we're still going to manage populations of these things. And hopefully as we go ahead here, 
it makes some sense because I think to some degree when we talk to some people about this they just think it's crazy <laughs> but hopefully it will make sense and we can bring you along for the thought process and and the analytics as we tend to do on why we've made this switch and although it may not be a great option for everybody depending on what your metrics and values and what you're trying to get out of your homestead and your homestead livestock and your just your life endeavors in general it might not be for everybody this may not be the path forward for everyone but maybe it will be an alternative path that even those who don't have a lot of space and a lot of resources could potentially investigate and uh, suddenly give themselves a little bit more resilience and maybe eventually sustainability on their own homestead.